Okay, so welcome back to another Bitwig tutorial. And on this one, we need to talk about the Parsec or Parsec 8. And this is a modulator. So I'm going to go and bring it right here. It's going to be Parsec and then 8. So this is a very cool one. You can do a million things with this one. So this one, what it will do, it will pretty much, it's like a step, uh, I want to say step sequencer, but yeah, pretty much the same idea. And at each step, you know, we have eight, we can run some modulations. This is what we can do. So let me just show you the sound. This is the sound. Pretty dumb chords. I've been using this sample, you know, for quite a while, so it just works. Okay. You know, it's just a very ugly uh, kind of a, you know, sequence. Uh, not sequence, just chords. Yeah, it's very dull. I wouldn't say ugly, just dull. So now what we can do is that this one, when it starts, notice that it's go, it goes at one speed. So we can go right here and whenever we go on this one or this one or this one is going to run a modulation. So for example, if I go to the second one, whenever we hit the second one, I'm going to do a little bit of filter. And on this one, I'm going to go step number four and now we're going to start you know getting something a little bit more better you know just a little bit better now the cool thing is that on this one you can just provide different instructions for each step notice that the last one is a bit more aggressive oh not that one the five the six number six now then i'm gonna go and i'm gonna go back to pretty much nothing okay so now I know that, for, for example, on this one, I'm going to be doing a lot, right? It's just maybe just a bit too much, but that's okay. Now on this one, you have the controls of the depth, which is going to be how much are you going to go up, how much are you going to go down. So think of this as a blend control for each uh, different step. So if I go the other way, which is positive and negative, instead of going up, it's going to go down. Now, of course, if you put this at the, at the middle, nothing is going to happen. But instead of going 100%, you just can do one tiny bit, right? It's like a blend control, let's say. All right. So again, it's just maybe too aggressive. So I'm going to go and just tone this down and I get something a bit better. All right. So I'm going to go and maybe do a tiny bit. Okay. So of course, you can go faster than this. And this is what, what you're going to be able to do right here. Right now, one, it means whatever rate that you're selecting right here. Notice that you can go in 8 16s. It's going to go much faster. Or you can go like that. It's going to go super fast. But notice that for when, when you use this once, you can go faster. Just alter whatever tempo you're doing right here. Or you can go slower if you go the other way. Right? Just like anything else. And you can go on Hertz. And this one is, if you go up, because it's going to go faster. And if you go down, of course, it's going to go much slower. Right? Always remember to select whatever, you know, you want to do right here. Just going to go on eight notes. Now, then you have all the other controls. So I'm going to go and do something with this one because I'm not doing anything. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to go there. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go there, do this. And I'm going to go there and do maybe this. We are doing the same thing. We are just playing with the filter. All right. So this one is going to be like the global mix control. Since we know we can do the kind of a, the mix right here on each step, this one is going to be for pretty much all the steps. This is the global control. All right? Pretty simple. Now, what happens if I want to go on a different motion? Right now, we are going from this beginning to the end. So with this one, we can go back and forward. And with this one, we can go, of course, maybe not back and forward if I disable this, but we go backwards. We start here and then we go down. You can still do back and forward. All right. Okay. So then you have the loop. So notice that the clip is much longer than eight steps. If I disable the loop, this is going to die on the number eight. So if I go and play it again, starts, goes eight, and then dies, right? So if you have the loop enabled, it's just going to, you know, loop. Okay. So then you have this one, which is going to be this smooth. Notice that the transition between nothing and full on each step is a little bit too harsh. That's fine. If you want, if you want this sound, that's fine. But with this one, you're gonna be, you're gonna be smoothing these transitions. So I'm gonna go up, 
and notice it's just getting a bit smoother. Notice that the transition is not super hard anymore. We can actually hear this on the filter. So, hard, smooth. Alright, so again, this is like the smooth control. Alright. Okay, so then of course, instead of uh, going and doing eight steps, you can do maybe three steps, or maybe two steps, or maybe one step. Now, what we are doing right here with the eight steps, we can uh, accomplish the same thing with one and two, because we are always doing the same thing. Alright, well that's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna go and stop it. And now, you have several ways of starting, uh, of start this, uh, you know, transition, uh, this motion. So right now, when I play it, notice that the, it says transport right here. We're gonna talk about this one in a second. Now, this one, this control will alter the face. So whenever, the, it's, if it says transport, it means that whenever I do play, it's gonna start on one. Notice that, uh, start on one, I stop it on the number six, but when I play, it starts on one. Cool, right? Very simple. Now this one is going to alter the face. So if I go and change this one, whenever I do play, it's going to start in a different place. Notice it's not starting on one, it's starting on two. So this one will alter, you know, whenever you're starting in this case. Now if I play it again, it's uh, starting on five. And as you go up, of course, you're going to start later on the steps. I believe this one is going to be six or seven. Yeah, it's going to be seven. Yeah, seven. So, of course, you can uh, you can modulate all this, and it's always going to start on a random spot. Yeah, and it's going to move them, of course. So, this control, I believe it's something very useful whenever you want to, of course, change, change the place where you're going to start, or maybe you want to do a little bit of modulation. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to go... I'm going to go and disable, uh, you know, just go back to nothing. Because I want to show you something, and with this sound, it's just not going to work. So I'm going to go and go to the number 6, and on the number 6, I want to do the same thing. I want to go and go big on the filter. Alright, so notice that right here at the top, you have something that's called, that's called step hold. If I click on this one, nothing is going to happen. So this one, what it does, it means that whatever you're doing on the previous step is going to hold it. So if I'm going to the number 5 and I say that on the number 5 I'm going to go a little bit of resonance. So let me just go to the number 5 and do a little bit of resonance. Notice that the resonance happens on 5, but it's also, also happening on the number 6. Now if I hold the number 7, it's going to hold the resonance and the, uh, the, the filter. Notice that this is much longer because we are holding whatever is happening on the previous step. So this is very useful, of course, if you have some other things that are happening right here. Let me, let me just go to the number five and do a little bit more. So we are holding pretty much everything that happens on the five. If I go and disable this, it's just going to happen on the five and not happen on everything else. That's what the hold means. Okay, so again, pretty simple to understand. And we cover pretty much everything at this point. So I'm going to go to the transport, because on the transport we uh, we have several options. So we know, uh, actually it's the trigger mode, not the transport. So the transport, it means that whenever we do play, it's going to start. And we know this, we, we, we actually been using this. So, we know that one. So then we have the groove. So now, this one is going to link whatever motion we go right here, we're going to link it to uh, whatever groove we have right here, if we are using a groove. In this case, I'm not going to use it, but remember that you have that option. If you're using groove, uh, you can go and use it here. So free running, it means that it doesn't mean, it doesn't matter if I'm playing or I'm starting a clip or, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just going to start and never stop. Right? That's free running. So then we have other modes, which is going to be the node restart, and this one is pretty obvious. I'm going to go, and notice that uh, it's still going. As soon as I do play, it doesn't matter if you're on the step number six, and it's going to go, and it's starting one. But notice, 
and maybe I'm gonna change the speed. I'm gonna go and do half a note. So take a look at the MIDI. So every time that we get a new note, it's gonna restart. Now this is of course maybe too uh, too slow. Let's go to a quarter note. Notice it's going back to one every time that we get a new note. It's never reaching to the number five. So that's what the note restart means. So then we have the node random. And then it says plays uh, at the set rate uh, with the new notes randomizing the position. So yeah, just node random. I'm just gonna go and do the play. So this means that whenever we get a new note or we uh, have an incoming MIDI signal, it's just gonna start the, uh, the random place. That's what it means. Never starting from the one, it's starting from whatever. So then we have the node advance. So this one is going to be uh, it's going to be working with the uh, with the uh, with whatever we that we are doing right here in the time. But uh, this one is going to move forward or go to a different place whenever we have a we have new incoming MIDI signals. But it's still going in the background. Notice that this is disabling whatever time we do right here because it's using whatever we do as default. Now, if we have some something very slow right there, this is going to be a little bit, you know, kind of uh, erratic. So if I go to a different sound, I'm going to go and bring an ARP right here. So this one, notice that since we have, you know, very uh, consecutive notes, it's just going to go and go and go and go. So we are getting pretty much everything. Okay, so I'm going to go and just go to transport. Now it is it's different. It's advancing a little bit different. All right, so that that's, that's pretty much it. That's the whole device. Now, of course, we can go and uh, right here just do something else. You know, just going go crazy with this one. Right now, we are just not doing anything. I'm just doing something on the step number five. But maybe I'm just gonna go right here and just go a little bit faster. Maybe I'm gonna go to 16 note. We're gonna go right here and maybe what we can do with the filter we can do different you know different values all right so a little bit of filter so this uh, this modulator depends on what you want to do is gonna require a little bit more work right so I'm gonna uh, go and do a little bit of resonance and notice how the sound starts to change. Maybe not this one, I'm gonna go to this one. Very different. So now we can maybe play with all the things. I'm gonna go to the number one, and I'm gonna do the sync. Maybe, you know what? I'm gonna go with unison mode. Gonna go to random, maybe to a random place and do the same thing. And again, the sky is your limit right here. We can even bring a different modulator to do different stops right here. Maybe we can go and modulate this one up and down if you wanted to. Depends always on what you want to do. We can even change the values on on the on the different mix. Maybe I want to do something like this. Maybe something like that, so we can bring a, a different modulator to do it, or just modulate it with this one. All right, so let me just close this. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go up, and right here, I'm gonna go up as well. And now we start getting, you know, different sounds. Maybe on this one, I'm gonna go. Really cool, right? Remember what we we can hold and just get different slip, different sounds. <laughs> awesome. So remember how the original sound was? This is the original sound. Not very special, but you know, with a little bit of uh, creativity and just you know randomness. We just get the great sound. Maybe it's a little bit too bright. But that's fine, you know? Now, of course, we are doing a million things. Notice everything we are doing. 
so maybe the filter ones are just a little bit too aggressive well you can go right here and just check whenever you have the frequency and just go a little bit down in that value so right here I'm doing a plus 40 maybe I don't want to do that I just want you know something less maybe something like that and now the frequency you know it's not a problem anymore so maybe the step number six is just a bit too much now we get something a little bit more kind of a usable on a track all right okay so let me show you something else right now i have a, a tiny clip right here so oh, let me just stop it uh, i'm gonna go right here and show you that i have a clip that says goes to a c e and N, but and G. now notice that they start in a different place but we are holding all the notes so first i'm, I'm hitting the a and i'm holding it and then at some point, it doesn't matter if, you know, start of the B, it just doesn't matter. I'm just uh, gonna go and do it right there. I'm playing the C. And then I'm doing the E, but I'm holding every time I pre press a new key. So this thing has the capability of uh, using a per voice. Notice that it turns into green. So this means that whenever we play a key, that's gonna be one voice. And if you're holding it and then we play another one, that's gonna be a different voice. So this instruction, this sequence, He's going to do something for this voice, but then when this one gets introduced, he's going to go and start, uh, it started again, but it's going to be its own sequence. So now we're going to, we're not going to go and play it. We're going to see that this one is going to keep this motion, you know, going from one to eight. But then when the other show, one, other one, other one shows up, it's going to, you're going to have more things going on right here. And it's because each voice, each key, it's doing its own motion, it's starting on a different place. And this is very different from the other sound. So this is what we had before. Everything follows the same. It's a bit more consistent with all, all the sounds, but we have more voices, we have more, you know, more difference in sound. All right, so that's it. That's what the per voice is going to do. Now, this is something very standard for pretty much uh, all the modulators and devices on Bitwig. So it's just something, you know, you should know at this point. Uh, all right, so that's it. That's uh, the whole device. So hopefully you learned something on this one. And uh, remember to like and subscribe and see you on the next one.